In the interest of community service, Power 88 presents live talk shows to inform, enlighten, and to stimulate thought and dialogue. The views expressed on this program are not necessarily those of the staff and management of KCEP or the EOB. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the program. Or call in and participate at 647-3688. Funding for community partners for better health. On KCEP Power 88 is underwritten by the Southern Nevada Health District. And here is your host. Good morning, Las Vegas, and welcome to A Healthier Tomorrow. I am Will Rucker, and I'm so excited for today's program. And I'm mostly excited because you've joined us for today's program. We have a wonderful lineup of guests that you're just going to learn so much from. They've got some amazing news to share, some exciting things that are happening in our community. And I've got my amazing co-host here with me, Sierra. Good morning. Good morning, Will, and good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this morning for Healthier Tomorrow. You know, i got to say, I love the coordination between the earrings and the cup, like the mug, like that's sweet. You know i got to sit there and look fly all the time from head to toe, Will. You already know. You look good. You feel good. That's right. That's <laughs> right. And you do a good job of it. So. Thank you. Awesome. Well, we are not going to delay. I want to get into it with our first guest from the Southern Nevada Health Dis- District. I've got Chris Elaine Mariano. Good morning, Chris. Are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? There we go. Got you now. Awesome. Thanks so much for joining the show today. Thank you very much for inviting me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Well, you've got some important information to share about back to school immunizations. We know, I can't believe it, it's already July. How did that happen? (laughs) (laughs) And so it's time to get ready for going back to school. So I wanted to start with, before we get into the questions about immunization, just tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do there at the Southern Nevada Health District. So my name is Dr. Crystalline Mariano. I'm a pediatric nurse practitioner as well. I am the supervisor for the immunizations clinic over at the Southern Nevada Health District. I supervise four public health centers where we do provide vaccines for children, infants, and adults. So uh, we are kind of right now in the process of preparing for our back to school um, for back to school so that children can be ready and prepared and ready to enter into school and register into school. Amazing. Yes. Um, good morning, Chris. Uh, as a as a former like educator inside of a school, I know that line is long on the first day when people think that they are registered and they're not. With school starting on August 12th, what are some things that parents can do now outside of buying the school supplies and their school outfits and the school uniforms to make sure that they prepare for their kids' first day of school? So, of course, those lines are extremely long. Um, Parents can definitely register for school right away. um, And then look at the requirements that are needed for back to school, for going back to school. So one of the main, one of the requirements that they do ask is that the children are immunized. And this is by the law of Nevada that we have to have our children immunized by a certain age. Um, Typically, when we enter into kindergarten, um, when the students are going into the seventh grade, Grade, as well as into the 12th grade or when they're seniors. What are some of the vaccines that are actually required for them to do school entry? I know that you said they can check in with their schools, but do you, I know you know, Dr. Chris, the, the key immunizations that they should be looking for? So it's dependent on your age and what you're going into school. So when you're going into kindergarten, they're typically looking for a diphtheria, tetanus, pertussis vaccine, hepatitis A, hepatitis B, the mumps, measles, rubella, the varicella or the chicken pox, and the polio. And these are all vaccines that are required. But you have to remember, too, even though they're vaccines, these help prevent disease. They are vaccine-preventable diseases. That is such an important point, the prevention aspect. It's a lot easier to stay healthy than get healthy, I would say. Yes. So, I would have to agree with you. Yeah. So is there anything parents can do to make getting vaccines just a little bit easier for their kids? I know when I was getting vaccines, I didn't love the needles and all of that <laughs> process. So what can parents do? Now, getting a vaccine can be a little bit scary. 
Um, I know my, I have two children of my own and they are in fear of vaccines and they know their mom always is giving vaccines to kids, adults, and just to any age. So kind of talking to our children and kind of just letting them know and be aware that we are giving these vaccines to help them to prevent from getting sick because we don't want our kids in the hospitals. We don't want our kids to miss school. One of the things that we have been seeing is that kids are missing school because they're sick. So we want to prevent this from happening. Um, I know sometimes I have to give my kids a little treat here and there or a little surprise or something, but maybe some ice cream at the end of um, once you're done getting your vaccines, those things are always nice. <laughs> Especially here in Las Vegas. We hit, what, 120 a couple of days ago? Oh, my God. Oh, yes. <laughs> Which is all that. So as far as it goes, we're, we're really talking about being proactive and not reactive. So can you talk to us about the Southern Nevada Health District and how we can sit there and support parents getting their students their, their vac- vaccinations, as well as how much it would cost? So definitely we need to prepare our families and our, par- our parents as well as our children. Um, the Southern Nevada Health District has four public health centers where we provide vaccines at. And currently, depending on which public health center you go to, we're open either Monday through Thursday or Tuesday through Friday. And then we have a location out in Mesquite where they're open on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So we are by appointment only. So please get online and look at the Southern Nevada Health District website so that you can see how to make that appointment. Um, Also, the vaccines, when you're looking at cost-wise, we do accept all insurances. Um, also, and if you don't have insurance, we do not turn any kids away. We don't turn any of our children away because our goal is to ensure that um, we vaccinate and we prevent disease. So uh, we do have free vaccines. However, there is an administration fee. Depending on the situation, we look at what's kind of going on with each family, and then we ensure that every child, no matter what, before they leave, does get vaccinated. That is so important to hear. Thank you for sharing that because I know a lot of people do have that cost concern and, you know, times are are difficult for so many of us. So I'm really happy to hear that you've eliminated those barriers and folks need to go get that appointment. So where do they go to get more information and to schedule with you? So they can go to the Southern Nevada Health District website. Um, uh, you, if you do your search in your search engine, just look up Southern Nevada Health District and you would have to go and there's different clinics over there. So you would look into the immunizations clinic um, to get that appointment. Perfect. Well, we'll get that website out there for you. And last question. I, first of all, I just want to say thank you for the work that you do for your dedication to our kids and our community. Uh, it matters so much. Uh, but. <laughs> I want to hear from you just personally. Why is this important to you? I have been in public health for about 13 years. I've been a nurse for over 21 years, and my main focus is really truly pediatric. So I used to work in the hospitals, and I used to see kids getting sick. I do not like having to see kids sick, and I don't like to see anyone sick. So prevention is really key to all of this. We have vaccine preventable diseases. These things can be prevented. These things shouldn't be happening. So if we continue to vaccinate vaccinate, um, infants, children, adults, I love seeing healthy people. It's for wellness and well-being. It's so much better for each of us and every one of us. And so my passion is to definitely ensure the health and wellness of each and every person here in Clark County. Thank you so much for that, Dr. Chris, on so many different levels. Um, Health is wealth, and that wraparound services for our kids and their families are definitely needed for healthy school years. So thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. The Healthier Tomorrow radio program is brought to you by the Office of Chronic Disease Prevention and Health Promotion at the Southern Nevada Health District. Being active has so many benefits. Don't let the summer heat sizzle your physical activity routine. Our Move Your Way Summer Initiative hosts free family fun days at local pools so you can stay active, cool off, and spend time with the family. Visit GetHealthyClarkCounty.org for a list of events and other resources to help you stay active.
And speaking of staying active, we have two amazing in-studio guests with us, none other than, well, you know what? I want you to introduce yourselves because you two are amazing colleagues in this work. So, Carmen, why don't you start? Yeah, hi. Oh, hi. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for inviting us today. My name is Carmen Hui. I'm a health educator and the Cha Chip Coordinator for Southern Nevada Health District in the Office of Disease Surveillance. And I'll pass it over to my colleague to introduce herself. Hello. Thank you for having me. My name is Tamara Travis. I'm an epidemiologist with Southern Nevada Health District, uh, and I work a lot with health equity doing a analysis of data that we have. Uh-huh. What is uh, ethic? Say that for me one more time. Epidemiologist. Tell me what that is. Yes. So we work a lot with the study of diseases and how they spread. A lot of what I do specifically is looking at disparities between health outcomes for different populations and what we can do as the health district and as Southern Nevadans to eliminate those differences between groups that we can prevent. Oh, we don't have to talk about line about some great things. I definitely love the concept of the, the health disparities and, and really diving in as to the why. Yeah, and I I appreciate you because I don't love doing what you do. Epidemiology is is for a certain type of person. I'm not that type. Well, luckily there are many of us that love this work (laughs) and we'll keep on doing it. (laughs) Exactly. So I am so grateful that that you do what you do. It's important because what you do is keep folks like me that like to talk a lot honest. You help us to have actual substance to talk about and and say what's really happening in our community. So your work is super important. Thank you. All right. So talk to us about the community status assessment. Tell me more about why this is important and why we need to be diving in. Yeah. So the community status assessment, we just launched this survey, um, but it's super exciting. We just launched it back in uh, May, May 15th, and it ends August 15th. So this is a huge survey that we have going on right now. So it's basically an assessment that explores more of an upstream factors beyond health behaviors and outcomes, including um, the um, association with social determinants of health, systems of power, privilege, and oppression, um, and basically figuring out the health status and how we're doing as a community. So it's been a very important survey. We really want to get the word out of there. Um, everyone is eligible to take it. Um, so well, everyone 18 plus in Clark County is eligible to take it. Uh, but the survey itself takes about five to 10 minutes. Um, so if you want to see change in the community um, and actually be a part of this movement and make sure that we're working on things and priorities that uh, we want to see change, then please take the survey because your voice matters and your voice counts. I know Tamara has been looking at all these responses. Um, so whatever you've been writing in those additional comments um, section, we, we see it. So uh, make sure you're putting down what we need to work on and improve on. So how exactly you say our voice matters, and it does, so we need to make sure we're voting, we're taking surveys, we're we're giving that information about our personal health, but how is the community health um, assessment used ultimately to make changes within our community or our board or within our city officials? That's a great question. So the community health assessment has three different components. The community status assessment is just one of them. So we take this assessment as well as the other two, and we build a composite profile of Clark County as a whole. Then we can have a better idea of what we need, what we're doing well at, what we need to improve on. And we use that information and we share it back to the community. So it will be available on our website on HealthySouthernNevada.org. But we also present this to stakeholders within the community. So this is sent to community partners. We present this to things like um, the Board of Health, Public Health Advisory Board, so that we directly give your feedback that you're giving in this survey to people that are making decisions about your health. Um, The Community Health Assessment, along with the Community Health Improvement Plan, determines health priorities for Southern Nevada for the next three to five years until we start that next cycle. So a part of what Carmen was saying with Your Voice Matters, if you take just five to ten minutes to take this survey, you are making a direct difference in your community for the next three to five years. Wow, that's so important. Let's talk about that frequency because I, I know that some of us have survey fatigue. We feel like, oh my gosh, we just did this. Why is it important to keep doing it? Um, so it's important because we have, um, if you did take the survey, we have very important questions out there. Some that have actually never been asked before. So we're definitely collecting data on that as well to see, you know, where our community profile and where we stand on that. So we really want to just hear everyone's voices and where we, we stand because change happens every, every day. 
I would say every year, but every day change happens. So we want to see what's exactly the the problem that's going on at this moment and how we can address that. Yeah, change does happen, and the only constant is change. Absolutely. So it's so important to be counted in that. And you've done a couple focus groups already. I want to hear just kind of, and I know this is not on your talking point, so sorry, but I'm nosy, (laughs) and I want to know, what are people saying so far? What are we finding out about our community? Um, So the focus groups have not quite started. That's the community context assessment. But we are getting a lot of great feedback from the additional comment section of the survey. So the survey itself is 36 questions. That last question is for you to tell us anything else that we've missed. And from that, we've been able to garner a lot of good feedback about other issues that are important things that we maybe didn't include on the survey. And we're using that information to determine what focus groups we should use and if there's any demographics that we've missed. Uh, Something that we've instituted this time around for that survey is including additional priority groups, which are underserved, which we don't often hear from. So that would be groups like older adults, LGBT populations, those experiencing extreme housing instability, Uh, those in rural areas, because these are groups that we often don't gather a lot of data from. So we wanted to take um, a really firm approach in making sure that we're reaching those. And um, again, we're using that information that we're getting from those additional comments to determine what other groups we should hear from in the community context assessment, which is where we'll do more of those focus groups in depth. I really love that you sat there and and talked about making sure you're doing those focused attempts from groups that you typically don't hear from. What do those focused attempts look like? I know that you're doing some virtual community meetings. The next one is going to be August 5th um, at 2 p.m. But what else are y'all doing in order to reach the people that we really need to hear from? Yeah, um, so a big part of this, honestly, is the community um, partnership that we have with organizations throughout our community. So we've been out so many outreaches. Um, We've been partnering with so many different organizations, making sure that we're out there, um, that we're collecting these surveys from people, like actually seeing them take the survey and write their additional comments and really hear what they have to say. Um, So we have a wonderful team out here right now. I know like this Las Vegas weather is terrible, but we're out there (laughs) and we that's actually one thing we really want to hear about all these events going on from now until August 15th Um, if you let us know we'll be there Um, but we really just want to emphasize that you know hearing about these are real people with like real lived experiences so it's very heartbreaking to hear some of the issues that people are going through so um, we really just want to ensure that everyone is sharing their voices um, through the survey Um, As I mentioned, we are reading them. So they're not just going into the stockpile of like, okay, next, you guys are just, you guys aren't just a number. This is like all important. Um, It's a community collective initiative. So we really just want to spread that awareness. Like the survey is important. It's just not, it's not just any other one, Um, but it will definitely make a change and impact. That reminds me, and this is a long road to get to a short point, but... (laughs) The song Michael Jackson wrote, They Don't Really Care About Us, Mm -hmm. is back in the 90s, right? And talked about all the things going on, and it's still very relevant today, Mm -hmm. like still very relevant. But what you all are doing is saying, the Southern Nevada Health District cares about us, and we don't just care about us as an entire region. We care about individual populations and individual people, and that's big. So I'm I'm really just sitting here inspired that this work is happening and being led by such incredible individuals like yourselves. Thank you so oh, much. Thank you. So with the survey ending on August 15th, where can we find it? How can we take it? Because I know I need to sit down and take mine. Absolutely. Um, so you can find it virtually on HealthySouthernNevada.org. Uh, on the left-hand side, it'll say Health Status. It'll be that very first drop-down that says 2025 Community Health Assessment. You can find the virtual survey right there. Uh, we have physical flyers and physical surveys. Um, so if your organization requires those, please do let us know. We will happily drop those off. And as Carmen said, we are uh, doing outreach events. We have over 50 events planned for July. So you will see us out in the community as well but the best place to keep informed is healthy southern nevada.org again right under health status where it says 2025 community health assessment perfect so healthy southern nevada.org go y'all y'all listening to the show go do it now right now they said it'll take us about 10 minutes yeah 35 questions 36 36 
Mm-hmm. We got 10 minutes in the show left, so, oh, that, that I mean, part. do it while you're listening. <laughs> please, please, please take it right now. <laughs> I'm curious about the, the CHIP that you mentioned, the Community Health Improvement Plan. Just kind of high level, how does that come about and what does it influence and just just why should people care that that even exists? Yeah, so um, in this framework that we're utilizing right now, it's a three, three-step three process. So the first step was basically to um, settle, make the foundation. So um, we settled that. We have a great, uh, engaging steering committee. The second part is the assessment phase, which we're currently in. And the third, third part is our um, basically the community health improvement plan. So um, we cycle through that every three to five years, as Tamara mentioned. And that's important because we utilize the data and the information gathered from the community health assessment, all three assessments, um, and we do a prioritization meeting. So we ask all community members, everyone involved, um, to rank the priorities in Southern Nevada. So those priorities um, get reflected in the community health improvement plan. So this is when community partners, community members, everyone comes together and focuses on creating an action plan. Exactly what should, what should, what should we do? How are we going to do it? And when will we accomplish it by so when you actually have this done and it's available, tell me to understand the format. Is it something that anybody can read and access, or do I have to be an epidemiologist to understand? Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, 100%. We cater it to everyone. Like We make sure that it's easily understandable. We have graphics, infographics, charts. Um, we love colors, so we make sure that you know it's exciting to read. It's not just another report. Um, we make sure that you know the information is exciting and just keep you engaged in it so um, it's definitely for anyone to read about it um, if you're interested in how our community is doing will you also be holding like focus groups or like meetings afterwards to also help disseminate the report and and make it very understandable i know on written form it's going to be absolutely great but we also have those face-to-face opportunities as well definitely um i try to um, present every meeting that i can get on every agenda make sure that we're spreading this to all these different community organizations um and get on every like advisory board agenda just trying to get the word out there because it's very important um that this is I would say the Community Health Improvement Plan report is just a collective report that, you know, this is what the community thinks is the main parties at this moment. And we should we need to work together as a community to tackle these. Um, so, of course, it's going to be available and um, we'll make sure that everyone hears about it. Awesome. And we love <laughs> hearing about collaboration. And we I know my audience. Right. So some people are saying, OK, you're talking about you working with folks, but who are you actually working with? Because everyone says, oh, yeah, we asked the community. Who's the community for you? Yeah, so we have um, some big partners. So we have Dignity Health, we have Intermountain Health. Um, we also have we're working with UNLV Nickrip, um, Puentes. Do you have you have any other shout outs? Sure, there's loads of them. Uh, Catholic Charities is another group that we've worked with. Almon, um, and. The steering committee is represented by quite a few community partners as well. Uh, there are some from Southern Nevada Health District also. I think Three Square is another partner that's a member of the steering yep, committee. RTC is a big partner as well. We have a whole variety. So across the whole spectrum, we try to include everyone. So and this process alone has been our most engaging and most robust um, process within the steering committee. So everyone's super excited, s- extremely passionate. And if you attend those our steering committee meetings, they're crazy. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> needs to say something. Everyone wants to include, you know, what they're thinking and what we need to do. So and I, I love it. So um, I just love how everyone's so excited to just make change and see difference in the community. Yeah, and those meetings are fantastic. And, and both of you lead them so well and keep the information so engaging. And I've been on there and there's been six. 60 people mm-hmm. or more at, at this. So when I, and I highlight who's involved because I want people to know this is real, this is tangible, and you're being intentional about inclusion. That's important. So I, I'm sure we probably have one more question to ask. But before we get there, I want to know how are you staying healthy personally? What are you doing for yourself? 
That's a great question. Um, it is hot outside. <laughs> so one of the things that I'm doing to stay healthy is to continue to stay hydrated, uh, especially with these outreach events that we're doing to promote the survey outdoors, as well as continue to exercise, taking care of my mental health by spending time with friends and family. Um, so those are some of the main things that I'm doing. I love it, Carmen. Yeah. So I'm a huge advocate for sunscreen. If you're not wearing yes. sunscreen, it's very important. Um, staying hydrated as well. It's very, very hot. Oh, also reapplying sunscreen. That's important. <laughs> It. People forget about that part. Um, staying hydrated, wearing sunscreen, staying active. Um, I I love walking. I walk every day. I try to do 10,000 steps a day minimum, and right. I've been keeping up with it. Um, but I since it's so hot now, I try to walk every night around nine or ten. But it's still hot. <laughs> but I try. I need to intentionally do it, or I'll just be a couch potato all day or sitting, you know. But um, that's how I stay active and healthy in this weather. But um, yeah, just. Do you you do what you can do right in this weather? So Never. and just a PSA: melanin is not sunscreen. So whether you're chocolate or milky, either way, you need some sunscreen. I personally like black girl sunscreen. It is not chalky. You will not appear like you are white. It, it really is very nice. So check that out. <laughs> well, thank you, Carmen. Thank you, Tamara, so much for not just for being here on the show and spreading this news with our audience, but for the work that you're doing. It really is important and it matters. So thank you for being here today. Thank you so much for having yeah, us. We really thank appreciate you. it. We really, this was a wonderful experience. And just if nobody's listened to what we said today, just listen to this one part. Take the survey. <laughs> and that would be super helpful. And we really appreciate it. And um, hopefully this community health assessment report, so in general, it will be released by March of 2025. So stay tuned for that on, on our website as well, healthysouthnevada.org. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. All right. So let's before we wrap up, let's talk about some community events outside of making sure we take that survey before August 15th. We also have in conjunction with the center and the Arlene Community Cooper Community Health Center. It's time to know your status. We all have one. So there's going to be free testing express clinics this Friday, July 12th at the center. We, because we know right now STIs are on the rise. So you can get tested for syphilis, HIV, hepatitis C, and all testing is confidential. No appointment is necessary and walk-ins are welcome. From 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. on the 12th, you'll be able to have free food as well as resources and free condoms available to you. And then we have one more announcement when it comes down to an event we have the las vegas 24th annual health and wellness expo that will be happening every single month starting in august specifically august 31st it is free at the santa fe check out eventbrite for more information and order for the details but please dive in for a free health event that is open to the families where you'll be able to learn the latest trends in fitness nutrition mental health and more Awesome. So lots happening in our community. So check that out to the audience. Thank you so much for tuning in today. The Healthier Tomorrow program is brought to you by the Office of Chronic Disease Prevention and Health Promotion at the Southern Nevada Health District. Looking for a way to stay healthy and hydrated this summer? Take the Soda Free Summer Challenge and pledge to reduce or eliminate sugary beverages from your diet this summer. Visit GetHealthyClarkCounty.org to learn more and connect with resources to help you eat and drink healthy. This has been A Healthier Tomorrow. I'm Will Rucker. And I'm Sierra Owens. And as we always remind you, you are not just a drop in the ocean. You are the entire ocean in a drop. And what you do matters. So live compassionately, stay hydrated, and take the survey. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye, y'all. <laughs>